We not paying taxes in 2020. At all. Legally though. After watching this video, you are going to learn how to reduce your taxable income so you can get the money back that you deserve. Income taxes are unconstitutional anyway, but I'm about my business. Stick around because I am gonna show you all the deductions that you need to know about so that you can get your taxable income reduced and make sure you stay till the end so you can figure out how to not pay any federal income taxes at all, period. All that and more, so keep it locked. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right, so welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned about money in school, but I guess the teachers was filing their taxes. Please be sure to subscribe because we talk about everything from personal finance to the economy to investing, and I get right into it. So first things first, I am a CPA, but I am not your CPA. I'm just a girl sitting on a microfiber couch. So please feel free to confirm anything I am saying on the internet. All right, so your taxes are based off of your taxable income, right? So let's say if you made 50K this year, not all 50 of those Ks are taxable. And in this video, we're going to break that number down to get some more money back in your pocket. So let's first talk about itemized deductions versus standard deductions. The standard deduction is what most Americans will take. And they give that to you because basically, you know, people will have the argument, well, yes, I made $50,000, but like I had medical bills and I gave to charity and I did all of that. So to make it easier for the IRS and to make it easier for everybody, really, they just give you a flat 12K. It's just the government's way of telling you to f*** off. The number vary depending on what your filing status is but for single filers you get twelve thousand two hundred dollars just off your taxable income so going back to that example if you made fifty thousand dollars this year they're gonna take twelve thousand two hundred dollars off of that and that's your taxable income but if you still feel like listen I spent even more than twelve thousand dollars this year then you can look into itemizing your deductions and there is a specific list and it's complicated. It's not necessarily dollar for dollar. Um, but if you do feel you've spent more than $12,000 on these items that I'm about to list, then it might be worthwhile to itemize. So the best way to get the biggest tax deduction, I mean like massive, is to make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. So for 2019, what you can deduct are medical bills. And again, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. There are some rules I'm not gonna get into details of, but you can deduct your medical expenses donations to charity, state and local taxes, and again, there's a cap this year, but it won't apply to the average Joe. Your property taxes, your interest paid on your mortgage, which is, this is important. If you have bought your house in the 2019 tax year, maybe towards the beginning of the year, depending on how expensive your house was, you might be able to choose the itemized deductions route and actually get more than the $12,000 back. There are a couple of others, but those are the most important ones. If you want to know the whole list, then you can go to the link in my description for the IRS website. All right, so if you are a W-2 worker, which is basically you work for the man, um, you will get something called W-2, which I'm sure everybody knows about. You've seen the memes going around about harassing the postman for your W-2 forms. The box we're going to focus on is box number two. Now, this is your federal income tax that they've deducted from your wages. And this, in most cases, is the most you can get back. Now, there are certain situations where you can get back even more than what's in that box, but you have to pretty much be a very low income earner. Your Social Security and your Medicaid, you ain't never getting that back, okay? That's not refundable. I'm sorry. And if you're in your 20-somethings like me, we may never see Social Security. But that's a different video for another day. As a W-2 earner, you don't get the most tax advantages because you aren't really giving back to the economy, right? So business owners, they're providing jobs. They might have even greater donations to charity. So they have more incentives than the average Joe just kind of collecting a check. Sorry. If you want to get the most money back, you will have to have your own business or do some sort of investing. So let's talk about the business owners. And stay woke. People who are Uber drivers or things like that, you can still get some pretty good tax breaks also. As a business owner, please keep all your receipts. In life too, keep them receipts, honey, because you will want to deduct every single thing. That $1 pencil you bought from the dollar store, deductible. Everything you use for your business, even things you might not think about, like your phone bill, your internet access, those things are deductible. Depreciation is another big thing. For Uber drivers, you can deduct depreciation. There is a caveat with that, and it's a little bit easier for Uber and Lyft drivers to just take the IRS standard mileage deduction because that is literally, it's 58 cents per mile you drive that you can deduct from your income. 
Also, as an Uber driver, you can deduct all the money that Uber takes from you and their fees. So make sure you're doing that. But for those who don't have their own business, for those who aren't Uber drivers, what can you do? If you're into your 401k and your IRA, try to max those out as much as you can. Depending on which option you choose, they might not be taxable. So you can literally hide, throw that money in there and then it'll come off of your taxable income. Now, I have a video on 401ks where I'm not the craziest about them. But if you do have employer match and it is advantageous for you, then definitely max that out so you can bring that income down. If you don't have a 401k or an IRA, but you still want to see if you can kind of get a tax deduction from that, you can. You have until April 15th of the next year. So in this case, 2019, you have until April 15th of 2020 to open up your IRA, throw some money in there, and it'll still be deducted from your 2019 tax return. Thank you, government. Another way to hide your money is in the HSA account. Now you have to have a high deductible health insurance plan in order to get a HSA account, which is a health savings account. But the idea of this is that it doesn't matter how much money you make, you can put money in here, unlike an IRA, which has limits. You can hide your money in here tax-free and it can also grow tax-free, which is awesome. One caveat for this one though, is that you have to spend on medical expenses. So if you're somebody who stays in the doctor's office, this might be something that's advantageous to you. It just depends. So speak with your HR department for more details. If you do want a, a more in-depth video, like I've said before, drop it in the comments and I will do that. So you went to college because that was the right thing to do and now you're drowning in student loan debt, right? Well, we might as well try to profit off of it the most we can. If you're still in school, you are eligible for a couple of tax credits, which reduces the, the amount of taxes that you owe. Deductions reduce your taxable income, Credits reduce the amount of taxes that you owe. So after they've already calculated your taxes, then you get these credits. So the American Opportunity Tax Credit are for people who are still in school. And what I like about this one is that you can get up to $2,500 in tax credits. And even if you don't owe any taxes, let's say you didn't have a job, you just was going to school all day, every day, you can still get back up to $1,000 in your pocket because God. So please follow those taxes even if you are in school and collect your $1,000. That is only for students who are in their first four years. So let's say you're past those four years, there still is a lifetime learning credit and that doesn't really matter what year of school you're into. It isn't as advantageous, but you can still get some money back. So look into that. Now your student loan interest, because we got slapped with these student loans, right? You can deduct the student loans also from your taxable income. Now it does phase out after a certain amount of money. I believe it's 80,000. Just double check me. So if you make more than that, you might be out of luck. Now those kids, if you have a kid, you know, <laughs> they're cash cows. They also suck money out of you, but you can get a lot of money back in your taxes. So if you're a very low income earner, then there is their earned income credit. You can get $3,000, a little bit over $3,000 per child with that earned income credit. You can also report all of your child expenses. So if your child is in daycare, you can deduct that. If you put your child in a camp, that's also deductible. People who maybe you don't have a kid that's in, who that's, you know, that's four or five. If you're putting your kid in a summer camp, you can deduct that as well. If both of the parents are working and they can't take care of the kid. So how can you get rid of taxes all together? So remember the tax system is an incentive program, not really a penalty program. So if you learn what the government wants you to do and you do it, you get tax credits and tax deductions for that. So what kind of incentives can the average Joe take a, take advantage of? Having your own business is, a, I mean, the best way to get your tax deductions because you can deduct every type of expense for the most part from your taxable income. Also, if you rent out portions of your house, you can deduct that. Real estate is one of the best tax havens because of this thing called depreciation. And I've talked about this multiple times on my channel, but depreciation can make you look like you lost money even though you made money this year. And this is what the big dogs do. They buy real estate, they depreciate it, and they look like they made a loss in the year. It's a paper loss, it's not a real loss. So if you're renting a portion of your house, you can depreciate a portion of your house. If you have a whole Airbnb business, I mean, that is a great way to also take depreciation and deduct a lot of expenses as well. If you're looking to avoid paying federal income taxes completely, you got to move to Puerto Rico. <laughs> yes, in Puerto Rico, hola como estas, you do not have to pay any federal income taxes. They do have social security tax and the other taxes, but the biggest one, that federal income taxes, you don't got to pay. So let's go eat some mofongo 
uh, is that Dominican? All right, that wraps it up. Please be sure to watch my other videos so you can get your education on. Like, subscribe, comment, join the family. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, keep your money up. Arriba!